Welcome and thank you so much for clicking on my video. I really do appreciate it. And I also really appreciate how everyone has been asking about my mother-in-law. If you weren't aware during the live show, I had to cut it extremely short yesterday because she was actually followed home by someone and pinned in her driveway and trapped in her car for about 10 to 15 minutes until that gentleman would leave. So uh, yeah, it's been a little bit of a wild time. I'm sorry for ending that stream, but you know, family does come first and I appreciate you guys asking about that. And uh, she was shaken up, but everyone is okay. Um, we're doing the right things, following those steps. But today you're here for some technical analysis today. We are going to get into to some technical analysis for the spy cues, Apple, Tesla, Amazon, NVIDIA, AMD, Meta, looking at AMC and GME, um, and a few other things, right? We're going to be paying attention to the dollar, talking about that a little bit, but I don't want to waste your time. So first things first, Friday can be really insane, and you're probably wondering why the chart looks like this right now, and that's just because I wanted to zoom out in real time, just slowly pull this so you can see where these daily expected moves are and really center that out because on this channel for Friday, we do give out those daily expected moves for every stock that we cover on this channel that we're covering in this video. You're going to see those expected moves over on Patreon in the, the description, but I just wanted to show you how massive tomorrow is. So we were talking about this a week in advance saying this is what you need to be paying attention to after Jerome Powell talked uh, recently we just said that's what we need to focus on we need to see unemployment we need to see non-farm payrolls and those are going to be coming out in the data as of tomorrow okay so as we pull this over we noticed that today we did get some jobs data so I think this is the real reaction that ADP employment change going down not the best thing but the initial jobless claims coming in right at forecast which is kind of fishy to me to see things come in right at forecast like people just forecasted the number correctly but uh, these things do get updated a lot so pay attention to that and then PMI today we did get at 51.5 which is actually a sign that we are still overall growing in the economy um, so we're paying attention to these things these can change now going into tomorrow at 7 30 my time central time so an hour before the open we do get non-farm payrolls unemployment rate once again just to reiterate it's kind of difficult to mess with unemployment rates. So if that comes in even, maybe it actually did come in even and we have that consolidation, but non-farm payrolls, they can really mess with these numbers. So if we're gonna do something like we did with the jobs data from today and come in at forecast, coming in at something like 120, 120K, that would make some sense and people might see that as a decent thing. They don't necessarily wanna see a low number there as well as a higher unemployment rate. That's just key to note. Now, getting over back to these charts, I wanna make sure Sure you have these on there because tomorrow can really be insane we have 557.64 to the upside and we have 541.58 to the downside so the key thing here is does this two hour have an opportunity to cross up is the momentum able to cross up here we can do all this technical analysis but that is mainly going to be in the hands of the data tomorrow it really will and going into a friday that's also in the hands of the market maker because we have options expiration so it really depends on what the market maker wants to do or the reaction to the data in the morning Morning because we are now still below this purple line, aka we have a 68% chance to do that. So the most sense for tomorrow is to end the day in this area. I want to be very clear about that. That is the most probable area to land by tomorrow, but everything is based on what goes on with that data. So you have to take that with that little area with a grain of salt and say, if we get bad news, that can all be distributed to the downside. This type of move can be distributed this way. And that's why we have that downward expected move. Make sure you have these on your chart. Notice that we have reacted down to the monthly expected move. So this is getting tagged very early on in the month. So likely to bounce from this level. If we break down below, we still have that 68% chance to land above it. So does this two hour, according to the signals, have a chance to turn up? That's what we're gonna look at right here and as we pull up a 30 minute, you're gonna see something interesting. And we actually did end up forming the 30 minute divergence down here on the MACD. Now, if I blow up the RSI down here, we can just see that that is heading down. So if we do see a pop here, there is a chance that this is just some kind of bounce. And that is actually going to be met with some selling. Okay, what that would look like is, this is a very obvious important level. We have the weekly expected move that can turn into resistance. And we have this price action down by the monthly. What that can look like 
like if we're going to use this area is go like this and then maybe by the end of the day we see a little bit of a downturn okay now we'll pay attention to that we'll pay attention to what the dollar is doing and we'll go over what we're going to be looking at from the dollar after we get into some more stocks as we move forward but i just wanted to show you we have made the divergence that says we could see a decent bounce from here that is coming out before the data you have to take it with a grain of salt because tomorrow is very dependent on the data and the big thing here is tomorrow can see some rip around moves volatility might be a little bit wild because we have so much implied volatility it's been a long time since i've seen an implied volatility this big going into an options expiration so it just tells me watch out now we're not going to give the dramatic effect for the cues, but we're paying attention to similar things, right? This could be a form of double bottom. We see the rejection divergence right here on the 30 minutes. So you do have it and the cues are different. They are showing it on the MAC, on the MACD and RSI kind of at the same time. Now you would say, if, and this is something you can read into with the SPY as well. We didn't necessarily go over this, but if this turns down, if this actually crosses down, that could mean we either need to go grab some buyers at lower prices, make another divergence point, or that could be very, very bad because we have so much implied volatility tomorrow. We are below that weekly expected move pretty dramatically. So just note, crazy stuff happens below here. Heading into a Friday, this might have taken the market maker off guard. So we'll pay attention if these signals are adding up to some kind of upturn up towards something like 469.52. That red line there, that is your daily expected move. This is our 68% zone. And that downside, if we do cross down on the 30 minute, would be something around 452.56, which would take you outside of that monthly expected move. Now we're paying attention to the 30 minute and paying attention to these signals down here for a key reason. And that's because of a two hour cross up. Now I wanted to note that this looks like the two hour could cross up here. It looks like we could see some kind of two hour bounce, but we're going to pay attention to the dollar to see if we see any rigged behavior behind that in case there's a rug pull come Monday. And we're going to pay attention to this upturn in general if we do end up going higher. And I know we're just talking about that. We don't know because it is dependent on the data. But if that data is good, you're going to see this two hour MACD cross and we might head all the way up towards 469.52. Maybe we see something crazy and do more than that. We'll see. There's a ton of volatility, implied volatility for tomorrow, which means we could see some big moves. So if this two hour is able to cross, there's one thing we have to pay attention to. It's something that we talk about in the swing trading course, both the courses down in the description, the sales being left on because I've had a crazy week. I'm dealing with my mother-in-law, trying to help things out over there, getting her protected and safe because the guy knows where she lives now. So take it with a, take that into consideration. I've had a crazy week, so I'm just leaving it there. I'm not touching it for now. I'm just not going to talk about it all the time. But the two-hour crosses up into positive territory, good things can happen. What's the problem with the positioning of the MACD, according to my people out there who have taken the swing trading course? The positioning of the MACD is pretty damn negative. So when you have a MACD that is very negative, right, this level Level right here is similar to this one here what happens a lot of the time you see some kind of spike which this spike actually happened to be on a Monday but you see this spike and then it curls back down so you have to be aware of situations like that even if it is extended we can go reach up and grab a lower high again all right the cues have already seen one lower high that's dictated by the daily scale has rolled down so that's important to keep into consideration please ask some questions tomorrow morning during our live show about the daily scale so we can remind people that the dailies have rotated down which adds even more probabilities to even if we do see positivity that could just rotate down we could rotate up it will be very different difficult to go test the high and make a new one because we are so negative and this could just briefly go positive and then roll back down. So that's what I am going to be paying attention to very closely over the next couple of trading sessions. But first off, I need to be paying attention to that data. The key thing being, what does unemployment do? If that scales up exponentially, most likely this energy that's been built up right here could be distributed down. If it comes in even, that could be distributed up. Unemployment is going to be very, very important. Non-farm payrolls is going Going to be important as well pretty much jobs data today is what we've been waiting for or tomorrow september 6th that's what we've been mentioning a lot on this channel and that's what we need to pay attention to so at this moment 
If that two hour crosses up, it can be a good sign. Sure, we can build up as long as this remains positive. But for the most part, we want to say this does have a good opportunity to be a lower high. Apple, we have a similar theme to the SPY and the Qs, and that would be a two hour cross up might be enough to get you through that 225.84 that is held as a pretty firm resistance. Now, if you do have expiration at this moment, then or, or going into tomorrow, then you might want to get those daily expected moves over on Patreon. Okay, that link is down in the description. It costs a cup of coffee every single month. The information is very freaking useful, especially on a Friday. If I have expiration, it's very, very useful. So uh, two hour curls up, good things can happen. Now, does does the positioning of the MACD matter? Yes, it does, because you could see a flash move up to this area and just curl right back down. So we have to pay attention to any kind of signals we're seeing in this area. We're going to go over the dollar in a moment. But for the most part, we just wanted to say the 30 minute here is what I want to pay attention to for downside. If this thing crosses down, look out because it might be making a new low, right? Test the low, go make a new one. It's still in negative territory right on that center line. So that's, you know, Apple's one on the 30 minute telling you tomorrow really is a 50-50 kind of day based on where this is. Slight edge to the bulls still, even though this is downward, still hasn't crossed. Now on the RSI, that's got a different argument. So you have this contradiction between your indicators because the MACD's lagging behind like it does. But something good that has formed here Okay, let's talk about some bad things. 30 minute crossing down, that's bad. Let's talk about something good. We come down to here, we just react, right? We didn't have really any good signals down here to catch this. I'm sure if you dig deep enough, you can find one, but those signals probably pop up all the time. You just saw that 30 minute cross up. Where did it go to? It tested that 225.84 and rejected. So that 225.84 level gets tested. What's the key area for that? That is your breakdown area. You see how controlled this is here. We break down below it, we get these little dinks into it and then we drop off so that area is very important we go up to it we pearl down we're consolidating right before if this sees positivity right now and just goes like that we can see some good things from apple going forward and i wanted you to be aware of that but that's how i see it with apple going forward Tesla did something crazy, and I'm going to show you the two-hour signal that said, hey, this, this was an opportunity, right? You just have to be able to manage trades and be confident with those things, all things that we teach in the course down in the description that's 90% off. For pro I mean, most likely I'll be taking that down um, tomorrow. But uh, for the most part, we just want to say the 30 minute looks like it needs to pull back. Now, if you remember down at these lows, we liked this signal. It took a little bit more time. We called this very well. It went back and retested the breakout area. We called that very well. It responded back up. We called that very well. We got to these levels and then we said some kind of pull back to then lead to an upside turn is what we were looking for. Now, that was very drawn out. You notice that's drawn out. If you look at a 30 minute but when you look at a two hour it starts to make a little bit more sense the key thing here being hey this macd was pretty damn negative so this is a little bit surprising but it can happen and this can happen in regular stocks too with that positioning of the macd so that two hour did curl up into positive territory and went to 234 where were we saying from this low that we most likely would start to react to if we're going to head higher 234 right this level right here so we're paying attention to the right things i'm seeing if this is some form of flagging on a bigger time frame right now i wouldn't take it too much into consideration but for now you would say we're cooked to the upside we need to pull back on a 30 minute before seeing that next upside play if you start to curl down on this two hour chart you kind of have some flatness up here on the rsi you kind of have some downward move here on the macd so if you curl down right away that can get ugly fast so just pay attention to that now now, the key thing that's different with Tesla is this, and I'm just going to show this one time. The monthly scale is turning up. So September is going to be a very important month for Tesla. If that thing can curl up, technically your indicators are telling you that this might be a good investment for 12 to 24 months. That's what it's saying if it curls up on the MACD. Um, but we're very early on into the month, so take that into consideration. As we go back into the shorter time frames, just notice we are hitting that sell zone and seeing that resistance come in. So we're going to need some good news to project you higher. We'll see if bigger time frame momentum can take over, but it would make total sense to do what we talked about if we were going to hit this level. Now that we've hit it, let's talk about it again. Left side, 
big head, kind of a wonky head and shoulders to in that curl down, this would be interesting. Now, I don't necessarily want to confirm this is a head and shoulders. I more just want to be like, hey, it looks like they may pull back to grab some more liquidity between this level here and in here, and then head higher, okay? That's how I see it heading higher. If you're going to head lower dramatically, watch for that two hour to cross down, cross through this little bit of flagging, more so paying attention to, can we cross through this level here? Can we cross through use that as resistance and then head down again that's what i would be paying attention to for tesla as of right now tesla seeing a massive upward move just a simple swing trade buy on a swing trade hey that thing's going up and uh even right now that would be a solid level at 234 to get some kind of pullback which might mean hey tomorrow's expiration if i do have that maybe i want to take some off the table but we'll see what happens with this going forward if it's going to pull back or if we're going to see some kind of drop or if it's just going to see a bigger time frame's momentum take over, we'll plan that out. Amazon's been doing some crazy stuff, and uh, that, that's kind of interesting as it goes. We would notice that um, we're going to go into a 30 minute here in a moment, but you notice that this curled up, great move. The two hour curls down like it's going down. Then we gap up. So you're getting some rip around moves here. Overall, a little bit of an edge to the bulls on the two hour chart here. So that is something to pay attention to. As we go into the 30 minute, I just want you to notice you do have divergence between these levels. So if the 30 minute drops, that's going to be a bad sign. All right, but where this 30 minute is right now, it is piling up right here. So if you get good news, it can head higher. I just wanna be very clear about that, but you do have some reversal signals in here. So if you do head higher and then you see that start to drop again, watch out and see if that's able to hold at this point. Amazon not looking like the best trade setup in the world, right? Not looking like the best thing in the world as we zoom out to like a daily time frame. One thing you definitely don't wanna happen is a lot of these daily MACDs, you don't want them to turn down. We're gonna mainly talk about that on Saturday, um, so make sure you're subscribed. But as far as it goes, the two uh, the daily turns down here. Where are you? Negative territory. So what's going to happen? Well, most likely you will test this low or go make a new one because you're still in negative territory. If we were a little bit positive, you could start to say, okay, maybe a higher a higher low could form something like this. But as it goes forward, and then we can maybe make some structure, right? We could do something like this, and that still can take place. But the probabilities when you are in negative territory tell you, hey, negativity is the most likely option we can come down to this type of level or maybe even go make a new one and that's going to be a problem because you're going to be breaking down through a level that's held up a few times so just be cautious with this going forward this is the piece of data we really have to pay attention to and i'm going to keep mentioning how important tomorrow is with the unemployment and um, the non-farm payrolls and that's proven in the options data because we have such big implied volatility for tomorrow Nvidia, you notice, turned over on the daily scale. So as of right now, unless we keep consolidating and turn back up right now, daily scale is to the downside. So just pay attention to that. If we do get bad data, that means daily momentum is still facing down. So that's something to pay attention to. We're looking for if this two hour can curl up and that's the key thing this is a trade that you might have heard me live saying hey i took a little bit on this i'm not taking crazy plays into tomorrow i have like 500 dollars behind this that is not a big trade for me whatsoever that's like not even a position for me so i'm letting that thing run seeing what can happen as far as tomorrow goes i still have a longer out expiration but the reason that i'm taking that is because you're starting to see some interesting signals here with the 30 minute looking like this and getting a bunch of rejections for possibly a double bottom so we'll see if that projects itself to the upside with some good news that means that the momentum to the downside is dying and if you get good news that could see a big reaction if you get bad news the 30 minute curls down and we can maybe make a divergence and then see what happens after that so but how we want to treat this when we're talking about making a divergence here and this curling down if that happens bad things can happen and then you want to say Okay, if that turns up, then there might be an opportunity. But for now, if that turns down, very bad. Why is that very bad? Because the daily scale has rolled over. So ultimately, the daily scales turning over tells us we should watch out even if we see upward moves for sellers to step back in. Just for a quick uh, thing here, I'm gonna show you it on the 15 minute towards the end of the day, just focusing on is this thing gonna be able to go positive? You see all those divergence levels here. I don't like 15 minutes all the time, but I will use them every once in a while. This is one that I'm using it with if i need to manage the trade early on in the day i will do so but for now the main thing for nvidia two hour turns up but look how deep that macd is it is very very deep into negative territory so in order to get bullish you have to break back through this zone 
right? We did it. We broke through that zone. We tested the top of it, but we didn't end up going higher, right? We, we tried to, and then it ended up being some kind of trap to the downside. So we have to pay attention to that zone. In order to get bullish, you have to get through it and most likely use it as some support to head higher, right? Maybe some kind of structure like this would make sense. But for now, we would say we have to pay attention as this is very deep to any kind of downward rollover right in this area because this could form and then maybe we're going to see this actually continue in a downward trend. So those are the things I would be paying attention to in for NVIDIA. I think it has a good opportunity with some good data tomorrow to fill this gap up towards 119. So that is something to pay attention to. But is this just consolidation on the 30 minute to turn down? So two hour turns up, good. 30 minute turns down, bad. AMD, you have a similar scenario of that two hour needing to turn up, but the signals here, I've talked about this a lot. Every single time you get some kind of divergence, it looks like it's going to play out, then it doesn't. Then it looks like it's going to play out, then it doesn't. So this is why I haven't liked trading AMD. I haven't traded this in a long time because way back in... Uh, I think it was these areas here. I was just like, this thing just makes no sense. And then it popped really, really high and then it curled back down. And then I go, okay, now we have some divergence we can play. Ever since this point right here, everything has looked wonky to me. And I just don't like trading wonky stocks. I like to trade very obvious things. Why would I make it harder on myself by trading a stock that looks wonky, right? So I overall like to play things that I think look a little bit better. And I think Nvidia does look better than AMD here. So that's the one I'm looking at, but I am, Obviously, I understand that if the two hour turns up, we can see positivity. How would that go higher? I think a reaction up to something like 150, 149 would be good, kind of pile up and head higher, but that would be an overall bullish take. The bearish take here is the daily scale. The daily scale has just recently turned over and where is that daily scale? It's already negative. So if you get negativity, negative data in the morning, this can really start to escalate. So I'd be paying attention to that. But if that two hour rotates up, you can see some good things. Now, Meta is one, I did not mind the 30 minute signals. I didn't mind it here for this pop, then it rotated down, got to manage the trade. Then we get down to this level, maybe we have multiple point divergence. So at this point, we can see that that's actually going positive. So I don't mind this. And the two hour here has turned up with some divergence here, kind of flat, a little bit down, I would say, but kind of flat and then up on the, on the RSI. So that tells you that this could be a bounce, but because it's only firmly on one indicator, we have to say we have to be open to a lower high. Where would that come in? Somewhere around this price point of about 530. I would really like that level for a lower high. But for now, if that two hour wants to continue up, we can see that form another divergence maybe in the future. Okay, Meta is looking like it has some positive price action. It is one that on the two hour has curled up. So right now you would give that edge to the bulls. There is only one problem with that. And that is we have data in the morning. Okay, data in the morning is going to be very, very important. So even though it looks like Meta could make that upward move, pay attention to your signals because if we get bad news and this 30 minute crosses over, it is not extremely far away from that center line, right? It's pretty damn close. So that would mean negativity is the most likely option. What would, what would that mean if this turned down on this MACD right here? Well, if it turns down and goes negative, test the low, maybe even go make a new one. So that's what I'm seeing for Nvidia at, or for uh, Meta at this moment, but it is one that looks better than some other ones. And I will um, be pretty confident in saying that. And it's all dependent on do we see good data tomorrow? Because if we do and people or not even that, just do we get a good reaction to the data tomorrow? The data can be good. The data can be bad. It more depends on the reaction and what the signals look like. And then if we get some kind of upward push, is the dollar scaling up with it? And that's what we're about to go over after we get into some AMC and GME. AMC was able to do a great thing and that's turn up on the two hour. Now I was paying close attention to AMC because of all of these 30 minute signals in here. We had some divergence down here. This is where you wanna pay attention. That 30 minute is curling up at the end of the day, really close to positive territory. So if we see some really bad things, well, that means that the uh, short sellers could be at risk because they are using a lot of stocks like Nvidia as collateral. So if you get bad news tomorrow and we actually send stocks lower, that can put their collateral at risk. They can get margin called and things like that. So we'll see what happens with this going forward. But this is a good signal. It tells you that the two hour is about to curl up. What happened? The two hour did curl up. So this is when you can pay attention. And if you see a little bit of upside, if that rolls back down, that means not the moment most likely, right? That means not the moment most likely. We could just be getting some kind of retest of the broken triangle and turning down. So that's what I'd be paying attention to. Obviously, the main signal to see a big, big upside move is going to be when you get a 
bigger momentum behind it, the daily scale. Daily scale momentum is what you need. You notice that we crossed above the 200 and they fight it right as we're about to get that breakout from uh, some key levels from that certain week back then. But now we need to get above 523. So that daily needs to cross up, see some positivity, cross on this MACD, get above the center line for the RSI. And this thing can be a simple swing trade to the upside. It's still within range of its 200 to be a simple swing trade at this point that I can manage, right? And that's why we teach you how to manage trades in the course down in the description. But AMC, the main thing you need is that daily scale to turn up. We notice something different with GME that is already turned up. So what does it mean if it's turned up? Well, if it is turned up already, I can really pay attention to those shorter time frames. I know daily momentum is with me. The only bad thing here is it's in negative territory. But you see how the MACD really came up here. That's very important because that divergence actually is formed from that close right here. So that tells me there is divergence on the MACD. It's not on the RSI at the same time. So maybe this is some kind of pop and drop. We'll see what happens with that. What can we pay attention to in the shorter time frames? A two hour turning up. Look how close that is to the center line. If that thing curls up, it can see a solid move. That is is what I would be paying attention to for GME is some positivity on the two hour scale right before a Monday where the last time the big move happened was on a Monday. Volatility throughout the day, kind of worrisome that it's holding right at this 20 level, kind of worrisome there, kind of some consolidation that if this thing curled up on the 30 minute, it can see a big move, okay? And that's just kind of showing you the opposite of the SPY, the SPY doing this type of behavior too. If it sees uh, a big upward move, it can go up. So we're seeing the same thing just on the opposite side for volatility. Um, if uh, the SPY wants to drop down, volatility could start to scale up, but we're already seeing some big implied volatility for tomorrow. That's probably why this thing's holding up. When this crossed up, why did it not just go into the sky? And that's because of the two hour. The two hour, it, you know, most of the time when you go over these signals, if you're using a 30 minute signal, a two hour is going to be stronger. Why would the two hour uh, chart be stronger than a 30 minute chart? Well, the momentum is stronger in a two hour because there's more volume behind it. There's more price action in it. There's everything more in a two hour bar. So the most likely thing to happen with volatility from right here was pulling back and it continued to pull back. So what I would be paying attention to is anytime that volatility can turn back up on a two hour, that is what I'd mainly be paying attention to. If you're aware of these things, you can notice that we touched the trend line and we're starting to head down from that. If we cross back down on this MACD, not the moment for a big amount of volatility, but we still could hold this crash signal. So we'll pay attention still in the month of September as there could be some big volati volatility coming in. But as of right now, we wanna say, okay, the crash signal is still holding. We're seeing the two hour dip down. I need that to turn back up or else this daily can cross down and we can see some positivity for a little bit of time. All right, so that's where we're paying attention to with volatility. Volatility turning down on the daily scale would give us a hint that we could see positivity continue for a few more days. Uh, so something to look out for from the dollar, if we see that positivity continue, watch out for a divergence on the daily scale. But what we're gonna pay attention to tomorrow is do we see this two hour turn up with the market, with whatever data we get, if the market heads higher and the dollar starts to do this, we're gonna be paying attention because that could mean that we're going to see a rug pull by Monday. And so just pay attention to that because rug pulls can happen on a Monday, even with positivity on a Friday, because it might be something to do with options expiration. The market maker might be messing with the market for options expiration and then the real move happens on monday so that is what we are going to pay attention to live tomorrow i encourage you to come to the live show ask questions ask questions about the course if you have them but for the most part we like to look at multiple charts i think it's a lot of fun it's a lot of it's a great way to learn is to look at different kinds of stocks uh, to show how the same signals can do the same things in different categories it's very very fun but some main things that i would pay attention to see if that daily is going to rotate down if we're seeming uh, uh, to be the correct correlation being a negative correlation. But if we get a positive correlation with the market, then we just want to pay attention because the dollar could head up while the market heads up. And that could just be a good sign that there is insider selling taking place. And maybe you're just seeing some Friday options expiration tomfoolery. So the main takeaway for today is we're going to see some big implied volatility. We knew to pay attention to this moment. We've known for about a week now that this was going to be a big day and it's proven in the options data with how much implied volatility is going into tomorrow. We need to take into consideration we are outside of that 68% zone, but we do have daily MACDs that have crossed. So there is an opportunity for you know us to head down. There's an opportunity for us to head up. Which one is going to confirm something that is going to help clear that up is going to be the data in the morning being 
making non-farm payrolls and unemployment. So let's pay attention in the morning. I will be live tomorrow morning to talk about it with you. Most likely trying to be live just like 15 or 20 minutes earlier than usual, but expect it. Uh, expect me to be. Expect me to be live by the by the open, not the close. That'd be crazy. But we might have a closing stream as well tomorrow. So I overall just wanted to say thank you so much for you know watching the video. I really do appreciate it. Thank you guys for liking, subscribing. You guys are fantastic. I wish you guys nothing but luck uh, going into your trades. But I don't think you need luck because I think a lot of you guys know exactly what you're doing. You know how to manage trades, and I think that is fantastic. And my hat is off to you. So thank you guys for joining. Thank you for being a part of this community, and I hope you have a fantastic night. Peace.